digestible nutrient plus fiber. The human body digests the nutrients and removes the fiber as roughish or as coal insoluble fiber or roughish or stool or feces. Fiber is removed via ascending colon. This is, this is a human colon where the fiber has a passage like a pipe. You have a pipe where you remove the fiber from this pipe and you can see you need to go for ascending uh, uh, colon. So the fiber must be removed from this colon and fiber is removed via ascending colon. So it looks like a garbage which need a vehicle to take this fiber out of the colon and this vehicle which takes the fiber out of the colon is called the probiotic bacteria which is a good bacteria which acts as a vehicle to remove the wastage from the colon and because you eat every day more fruits and vegetables and cereals, you have many uh, quantity of fiber, so this has to be removed. And there is a capacity of the colon to remove this fiber. Uh, and this bacteria is growing up to uh, 12, 1 to 2 kilo of trillion bacteria numbers. So it must be... Uh, replace each time it remove the fiber. So the bacteria has food, and this food is called prebiotic. And prebiotic is found naturally in human milk and gum arabic. Uh, in other fruits, cereals, and vegetables, there is prebiotic, which is a food for the bacteria. So the last three has a small amount, and you can see gum arabic is rich, 85% uh, prebiotic, which is a food for the bacteria which removes the roughage or removes the fiber. So the source you can see, gum arabic percentage of, of prebiotic is very high uh, compared to human milk. All fruits and vegetables and cereals doesn't have any uh, amount sizable to remove the fiber from the human body. And as you said, the food for the probiotic is uh, prebiotic. And this is the picture of gum arabic, which is very rich. We can compare it. Three teaspoons of gum arabic powder uh, has more prebiotic than uh, 30 apples. We compare other, other fruits and vegetables to gum arabic. And here you can see all kinds of fruits and vegetables and cereals have very low amount of prebiotic fiber, which is very vital for human life. So what else is a probiotic function for your body? This bacteria which reside in your colon has other function other than removing the fiber, which is to boost the immune system against disease and remove toxin and extra fats. So balance out also bad bacteria. Because you have bad bacteria in your body, it must be removed and must be balanced. If you have enough good bacteria, which is probiotic bacteria, then you are safe and you are healthy. So, but uh, we call this, this, this uh, topic about the fiber trap, because we are all have been misled about fiber. It's the biggest misconception about fiber in the world today. You read, you have to eat five portions of fruit and vegetables every day to get your fiber. Everybody is talking fiber, fiber. In the last 10 years, you can see many products talking about fiber. But fiber, as we said earlier, is an unavoidable hazard. Fiber is an unavoidable hazard. Because you need to take the nutrients from the fruits and vegetables, and you have to throw the fiber away. And because of that, there is promotion of fiber-rich prebiotic poor. Because we said prebiotic is food for the bacteria which remove the fiber. So if people do the opposite and consume more fiber and less prebiotic, then lifestyle disease will come into place. And this is the case in the world today. People are promoting increasing the fiber and reducing the prebiotic 
against instead of eating more, less fiber and high prebiotic to remove the fiber itself. So promote eating uh, fiber rich, prebiotic poor. First, they confuse the fiber rich, prebiotic poor with fiber poor, prebiotic rich. I mean to say you eat more prebiotic and less fiber and the opposite is not the, the correct way to do it. And through that, there is a lot of confusion. They call the fiber insoluble fiber, and they call the prebiotic soluble fiber. And how could you call something which removes the other, you give it the same name. And this confusion has compelled all FDA, including US FDA, to talk about increase the intake of fiber every day. They tell you to eat more fiber every day, whereas you don't need that and you need to eat more prebiotic than fiber. So this confusion and misconception has led to, uh, since the 18th century to date, the most popular fiber-rich prebiotic poor in the West is oats, which is shofan in Arabic. The most popular uh, fiber-rich poor uh, prebiotic poor in the East is full which is the Egyptian beans. So the West is concentrating on eating more oats. 80% of US population is taking oats every day in the morning. And in the East, we are taking food too much every day. And this is, again, is the most unpopular is human milk. And the most unpopular in the East is also gum Arabic, which is a rich source of prebiotic. So why this happened? This happened because of many factors. If uh, WHO and FAO classify gum arabic as an emulsifier, not as a, a fiber-poor, prebiotic-rich product, because it is classified as an emulsifier, which is only good for additive, then people ignore the main factor for gum arabic as a prebiotic for the human life. Also, infant and baby formula were heavily advertised for a substitute for human milk. So these few factors I'm mentioning here, many factors are available. Also, FOO and World Lead Gastro, Gastro Organization, Intestinal Organization, also recognized phosgos inulin as prebiotic. These are industrial, industrial prebiotic, not natural prebiotic. They recognize them and ignore gum arabic as prebiotic. International Scientific Prebiotic and Promotion Probiotic Organization also recognize all industrial, what you call junk prebiotic, again, is the unnatural pre -pro prebiotic gum arabic. Most websites, if you open the website today and see and read prebiotic, you will see that there is no mention of gum arabic uh, as a prebiotic. So this is... This is another confusion, is to call the bacteria probiotic and to call the, the, the food for the bacteria prebiotic. So you are get confused all the time. What is probiotic and what is prebiotic? I'm sure you here, some of you here, will consider this now. Why you call this probiotic and this prebiotic? Because it's a, it's a jargon business. So between 2000 and 2009, there is 180 products uh, produced in Europe and USA, EC4 Soft Authority has said all 181 probiotic products are deceiving the consumer. And this is published in The Guardian and in the BBC. But we didn't know that, and, uh, and, and confusion may some, make some consumer to think that if probiotic is not working, then prebiotic will not be working. And this is the confusion of misconception. So we have to, what is the outcome, the fiber trap? We call it the fiber trap because we are making people to eat more fiber, less prebiotic, whereas we want it the opposite. We need people to eat less fiber and to eat more prebiotic to boost your immune system. So as, as, as in the presentation given to us, they talk about the life expectancy in the West, is, is 75 years old. And life expectancy in our countries is 40 years old. 
now the situation has changed, actually. The situation now is talking about living too short, dying too long. Means that you are living short life in healthy condition, but in your years of life, 75 or 8 years, you are living in agony. Actually, 50% of the North Hemisphere people are getting constipation and related lifestyle disease. And the other 50% in, in the Southern Hemisphere are getting 50% of the population as diarrhea and IBS and related lifestyle disease. So most of the people of the world now are considered dying too long. So the issue is not the number of years, the issue is living your life in healthy condition. So the way out, and the only way out, is to eat more prebiotic and less fiber. And I give you an example. If you're eating less fiber, actually, you are better off. You have in human life two experiences. One experience is the infant child. The infant child, in two years, Hulain, two years' time, is only taking zero fiber in human milk. So he's better off with zero fiber. The other experience in life is when in the Torah and the Quran and the Bible is mentioned that Moses people, alayhi salam, has eaten only manna and salwa for 40 years without fiber. Because manna is mentioned in the Torah and the Bible and the Quran as contain zero fiber. So in human history and human life today, you have the children up to the infant stage, no fiber. And for others, the only experience recorded in history and mentioned in the three hero books, holy books, that Musa's people preferred to eat more fiber than eating less uh, uh, fiber and more prebiotic. In fact, gum Arabic has the goodest of the two combinations. It has the highest prebiotic con content and has zero fiber inside this nurture and this is plant product. So uh, prebiotic, so the motto today is to go for protection with prebiotic is better than cure with antibiotic because antibiotic actually kill the probiotic bacteria and kill the pathogenic bacteria. Whereas probiotic, prebiotic only feed the good bacteria and leave the pathogenic bacteria inactive and this way the balance is created. So we, we propose that because the only authentic prebiotic on earth today is gum Arabic, and this is land is gifted with gum Arabic, we have an obligation towards the world population to increase the plantation of prebiotic forest, which is gum Arabic forest, and this is an organization uh, created to do that for boosting the production of prebiotic. So I, I, I uh, conclude here and show you this uh, picture. Thank you very much.